Welcome to Formosa Dream Chasers. We're your hosts, Mary Ann and Ching En. Please join us as we explore the journeys amazing people take in pursuit of their dreams and get insights from their experiences. Let's hit the road and get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the program. In this last installment of our chat today with Chair and Professor Eugene Trisha Lin, she shares with us the most memorable moments of her journey and imparts her wisdom and important life lessons for all of us as we ourselves go after our dreams. Trisha, you were sharing about all of the different experiences that you had from how you got started with being an educator, professor, and then later as a chair. And you also describe yourself as an advocate for social justice and、mm-hmm. feminism. So what would you say is your life goal right now? What would you say is your end goal? And what do you wish to achieve in your lifetime? Your question kind of excites me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> only, good. only because、um, I do not think I have achieved much. You know, titles mean really little, <laughs> degrees are just degrees. My goal is really a liberation of the mind, right? That's every single mind. I also don't think the effort to liberate every mind. Can be fully、uh, realized in my lifetime. And I, I don't also believe that it's ever going to be realized. That is to say, it's an ongoing struggle. As Angela Davis' book title points out, freedom is a constant struggle. So I would love to see feminist education be placed everywhere because ultimately that is about. You know, decolonizing,、uh, you know, emancipating of、uh, the mind. That, that's also very general and very, very broad. I often think that we have to learn as much as possible,、um, extend ourselves as much as possible, and realizing that、um, we are all connected, right? I'm, I'm invoking the indigenous wisdom, right?、Uh, all my relations, we are all connected. What matters here matters elsewhere. So, what's happening in Gaza, what's happening in Palestine, has a bearing also on lives here、uh, in Taiwan. And I would like to see that everyone, I mean, that, that, that the goal for myself, I'm not to speak for the world, the goal for myself is to, quoting Ahmed, to be a feminist, to stay a student, to be a student for life, to be a student of.、Uh, Of、uh, all liberation struggles, and given what's happening in Gaza, given what's happening in Palestine, I mean, this is my goal that I'm going to be forever a student of Palestinian struggle. And Palestinian struggle has a lot of wonderful lessons for all of us in Taiwan. So, Trisha, as an educator for social justice and feminism, what are some of the most rewarding experiences from your journey that you can share with us? Two moments. There are many. Okay, I want to shout out to my former students because I would not be my full self or realize this fiery, you know, warrior in me without them calling me into being.、Uh, when I was at Borough Manhattan Community College, I worked with this amazing group of students.、Um, They wanted to form a student organization. They wanted to write, and they wanted to write something that matters. And they formed a student club called Renegade Writers. And they came to me. I don't know how they came to me, but anyway, they came to me and said, Would you be our faculty advisor? I said, Of course. It felt like a privilege, right? An honor. So I said, Yes. Little did I know that launch, you know, that sort of sent me off. On this path of、uh, incredible journey, watching students leading a movement. So, the renegade writers were so dissatisfied with the、uh, publication put out by the student newspaper. Content-wise, it was it was not very interesting, and it also didn't touch on matters that really that matter to them.、Um, so they said they want to write articles if、um, and and they submitted articles if they didn't get published. Very unhappy, they came to me and said, 
no, they would not publish our articles. I think we should publish our own paper. But then the school would not allow a second paper. So we did some discussion and we came to a very brilliant um, idea because one of the renegade writers happens to be working uh, for a print shop. And his supervisor, boss, said to him, he could actually print certain hundred copies in color, in glossy paper, for a very modest amount of money. But they had no funding. So I said to them, I will sponsor their paper. So they started publishing earnestly. They named their uh, newspaper Hypnot Generation. And the first issue just hit the nerve. It has poetry, it has op-ed pieces, and it has also investigative journalism. It talked about things that the university, the college should pay attention to. The first issue came out. I think we were only printing 300 copies just because it's out of my personal pocket, right? That first issue came out and it was already fire. The, the issues would disappear, <coughs> would just disappear. Um, <coughs> students reported that they're in the library having their issue of hypnot generation on the desk and they went to the bathroom they came back it was it was lifted already off the desk and well after two three issues so they publish uh, monthly after two three issues they sense the energy because they realize that the everyone is craving for that paper and uh, they say we have to really do something about the student government it's not doing anything it's allowing the administration to uh, appropriate the student funds. So they said, we are going to run, um, we're going to form a united um, slate. We're going to run the for student government. And they did. This, this is just a few issues of student, really, really outstanding student papers. And uh, the next spring, they won by landslide. Now they're in the student government. They're able to <coughs> turn their underground paper into official one. Right, so hypnot generation, I believe, is still going. I have left the college for almost nineteen years, so I'm not keeping up with it. But the last I heard, the uh, the student government is still very much in the hands of the uh, the student for student rights. So that was memorable because the student organizing was just so inspiring, and because my students were all students of color, and they taught me about racism firsthand. I mean. I experienced secondhand, but they, they, I mean, it was just incredible moment of my life. And it was a gift from students. So that's one moment. The next is I was the first NWSA president, National Women's Studies Association president to, to highlight Palestine as an issue in the national conference. And that kind of gathered some momentum. My second year as uh, president, they would like to, you know, it was also a time echoing the call for BDS, boycott, divest, and sanction of Israeli institutions. Many of us had already signed on to BDS, but as an association, that proved to be a much larger challenge. But in that conference in Puerto Rico, 2014, where Bell Hooks was the keynote speaker, the momentum was such that they, they gathered overnight close to a thousand uh, signatures. And uh, we said we would actually make this a, a forum, that the, the referendum, a, a public referendum and voted by the membership. So one final moment as a president was me essentially saying, well, the membership has spoken we should move forward with this referendum. And the referendum happens immediately after I stepped down and it passed with close to 90% of people that voted, which is astounding. It's a lot, a lot of people endorsing this action for Palestinian justice. You touched earlier on some of the challenges you faced in your life to become the educator that you are and the advocate for social justice that you do. And that journey hasn't been easy. What were the life lessons that you have that you can share with us to people who want to follow in your footsteps or to people who also have a calling but maybe not the courage to pursue it? 
based on your experiences, what life lessons could you share or advice that you could give? It's a great question. I want to say that never doubt yourself. Always believe in yourself. And belief itself is very powerful. And if you envision something, if you dream of something, don't let all the noises around you to tell you, oh, it's impossible. You're just a daydreamer. Well, things happen because of daydreamers, right? I I would say that follow your gut. Your brain is fine, (laughs) but your brain gets very confused. (laughs) Follow your gut and um, always expand yourself. Always know what matters to you also matters to a lot of people. And what matters to other people also have a bearing on you, your life, and your world. I really love that answer. I really do. It it resonated so much with me. Yeah, they are like visceral moments mm. Yeah. that tells you you should do this or not. Yeah. Yeah. That's very intuitional. Yeah, and I love the fact that you encourage people to continue dreaming, even if other people say you're just a daydreamer, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You know, the vibrant democracy we live in today here in Taiwan, Formosa, would not be what it is without some audacious, daring, visionary daydreamers. Is there anything else you want to say or add or share? No, I just want to thank you both for the opportunity (laughs) to actually to chat. Thank you. Thank you, Marian. And thank you, Chingen. Thank you. Thank you. We hope that you are enjoying our program. If you'd like to hear from a particular industry, please do drop us a line and share your thoughts. Simply go to the RTI website at en.rti.org.tw and click on Programs. Look for our show, Formosa Dream Chasers, and fill in the Google form. We would be more than happy to hear from you. Thanks, and we hope to hear from you soon. Again, this is Ching En. And Mary Ann. See, See you guys, guys next, next Sunday. Sunday. Bye. Bye. Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, SoundOn Podcast, Spotify. You name it, we're on it. You can find selected shows produced by RTI's English team on different streaming services. All you have to do is search for the show or type RTI. Find an episode you find interesting, hit play, and you'll learn more about Taiwan and its people. It's Michelle, your host of Geek Out, where you can listen in on people's passions in Taiwan and around the world every Thursday. What's your cup of tea? Tickles your fancy or floats your boat? Geek Out guests get up close and personal on topics from Dungeons and Dragons to mental health awareness to herpetology and so much more. Thanks for listening to Radio Taiwan International. Check out Geek Out and a plethora of other awesome shows on the website at en.rti.org.tw. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you there! RTI, exercise for your mind.